everybody, I'm Evil Rabbit. We're here taking a look at the wheel from the Moza R5 ecosystem. So my one pet peeve about the R5 when I took a look at it, when Moza sent it out to me, was, you know, the small diameter wheel. It, you know, was a bit smaller than, you know, what I was used to, but it's very much like the Logitechs and stuff like that. But now, Moza Racing has released their ES 12 inch wheel mod so just over 300 millimeter wheel we have a new rim which is a round rim to put on the r5 es steering wheel so we're going to take a look at that today i'm going to put that wheel back there we're going to take a look at this 12 inch es wheel upgrade Let's see what we got going on inside there of course we do have all of the buttons and everything all the stickers and everything that we can put on that ES. And of course, we have the wheel itself. Trying not to uh, obliterate my camera. So before we pull the wheel out, we do have a small box in here. Which is the paddle extensions. So these paddle shift extensions are because obviously you're going to a bigger wheel. They have extensions to add to the paddle shifters. And these are nice quality aluminum and really, really nice design. And of course you got some hardware with some screws to put it all in there. And we do have the second one right there as well. So we got some paddle extensions, which is definitely a, a very big plus because that's going to come in clutch if you're wanting to use paddle shifters and stuff like that. And of course on the back, they do have instructions on how to uh, install everything for the paddle extensions and everything like that so taking a look at the actual wheel itself we get the tape open so we have their 12 inch wheel which is actually you know nice and thick aluminum like you'd expect from moza you know you got the traditional yellow line on top and things like that so this is actually a very big high quality wheel which is going to be quite nice Comparative to this one. And that's what I'm super excited to get it on there and have that larger diameter wheel, as you can see. Larger diameter wheels so that we can actually utilize the R5 more for drifting, personally, without the D-cut on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing swapped over. Should be a very easy, straightforward process. Going to take out our screws. One was a little bit tighter than I expected. So can't thank Moza Racing enough for being a continued partner of the channel. As I dropped the screw on the ground, it just said, Geet, I'm going to head out. Continued partner of the channel and sending this out to me so that I can get the R5 wheel with a larger diameter rim. Because this bolt pattern is not a 70 mil bolt pattern like you'd expect from like the R9 one and, and stuff like that. For the you know the RSV2s and the RS wheels and CS wheels, this is a smaller diameter one. So I'm trying not to rotate that quickly. Really, so with my hand underneath, so that's why I'm holding it the way I was. So we're gonna unscrew that. So in theory, this should just pop right off. So me being a bit of a dummy did not take into consideration that there was three screws on the back side here. You can see one of them here. There's three screws. There's two there, and then there's two that go right inside the here on the ES wheel. So I didn't read the instructions do that. So we got those three screws on the back and the six screws up front. I did take my quick relief off, so I do not um, damage the wire or anything like that. So now we can take the wheel off, but we do have to be careful because there's a spring in here you don't want to lose. So we can take the wheel off. And by spring, I mean the spring that's sitting right inside here. Gonna make sure that goes kind of well, as I'm about to drop it. Make sure that goes back in there. I'm gonna put it back the way it was. Kind of doesn't really make a difference though. So now, since we have that, we can grab the new wheel, which is only gonna utilize actually the two screws on the back, not the bottom one. So we're gonna take this and we're just going to move the quick release because it's there. And we're going to place this on like so and then we're going to screw these two screws in 
to hold things in place. Get my extremely long screwdriver here. The only one that was uh, narrow enough to go through the uh, quick release hole. So then we're going to grab one of the other screws. It's very hard to somehow do this one handed. Get that popped in there. Make sure all my buttons and everything are in place. All right. Then we're going to get this screw as I knock the camera over. Get this screw in there. Once again, take the extremely long screwdriver. And get those two screws tightened in place like so. So now that retention, that little spring is not going to disappear. So now we have that on there, which is already substantially different, as you can see the size wise, and it looks much nicer. So now we're going to get our quick release put back on. So we're going to move that aside. We're going to get our quick release plugged back in. We got our quick release plugged back in. You don't actually have to take that quick release off. I just did just for sake of um, safety. We're going to get that, that put back down there. In the two notches, it's very simple. There's two notches and two notches on there. Falls into place. Place it back down on there. And we're going to switch away from the very large screwdriver. We're going to drop our six quick release screws inside. And we're going to go ahead and get this tightened down. Now, I personally always do them in cross patterns, just like I do wheels on cars. It's just a personal preference that I do. I'm not sure it doesn't really make that much of a difference going, you know, in a circle if you really wanted to. Tighten that all down. This is actually already making this wheel much nicer to look at and much, much easier to drive. We're going to find out. So we're going to go and we're going to actually tighten these down all the way now. Not super tight. Don't need to like manhandle these things in there. Because I do love the ES with all the, the way the buttons and everything are set up in the ES. Already did those. Now we're on the last two side ones. Then we got to put our paddle extensions on, I believe, if we don't like the position. See, I actually don't mind where those are. The paddle extensions are going to... But, you know what, that does make for a much nicer... Uh, much nicer feel. So we may put those on. We're going to try and drive it without the paddle extensions because personally, I like them a little bit further in because I can just use my middle finger to use them. It also keeps them kind of out of the way for when I'm drifting. So we're going to go get this put on the rig and uh, give it a full send. So we are here on the rig. We do have the 12 inch rim now on the ES wheel with the Moza R5 base here on a set of Corsa. And I did go ahead and actually put the paddle extensions on. As you can see, they uh, give you a nice tool to be able to put the screw in through the front side. So if you are going to do this, I would recommend putting those on before you actually put the rim on. Uh, it would make it a lot easier. They give you a nice tool, though, to go in here, a nice angled uh, Phillips head screw driver. So it does work. But, you know, the rim being now a circular rim is going to be much more better for drifting. So we're going to go full send here and see how we do in the VDC E46. First ripped with the ES wheel on the R5 with the 12 inch mod. It already feels much nicer not having that bottom D cut. Now, I do not have a tune on this car. So this is a bare bones drive in this E46. So go full send. The 
Bit of an early initiation there. The power alley. Oh, too wide. In the dirt. But we should be a halfway decent run. And overall impressions of this wheel, this makes this wheelbase that much, that much cooler. The R5 was a very good wheelbase. I used it a lot in ESDA when it first came out. And now with this larger diameter wheel, this feels more like home. You know, I love my R9. I love my R21. The R5 definitely a very great entry level wheel to get into the direct drive game. And, you know, it's definitely a... Uh, very nice wheel with plenty of force feedback. We may have scrubbed a little bit of speed on that. We're gonna try and stay in fourth up power alley. Oh, a little bit too much angle there. A little bit of a decel. This is a very different version of the track that I'm used to. But overall, not too terrible for the wheel feeling. And, you know, we are on 100% force feedback on the wheelbase and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the runs if we can. See kind of where we were at. That was a long initiation. A little bit of a bobble there. So not crazy. I believe this is where we downshifted in. Yeah, we went all the way too wide on that one. Overall, not too bad of a run. We could have done way better, but like I said, getting back into this R5, you know, from going from my 21, takes a little bit of uh, getting used to initially um, with the way the wheel reacts and stuff like that, but it is super smooth. Like, I enjoyed it when I was in ESDA. Had a lot of good qualifying runs and stuff in ESDA with it, so it's great to have this larger diameter wheel. That was a hard flick entry. This uh, VDC... E46, definitely a, a fun car with that LS. Yeah, see, that was much nicer going through this. A little bit of over-rotation there. We kind of stalled it out there. We should have been uh, more on power. So we're going to go back, and we're going to try another track. So of course, you know we had to come here to Long Beach with Long Beach ending the event. Definitely a very crazy event with some uh, interesting calls and things like that. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought about the event and the Super Drift events that just ended. So we're going to go full send here in Long Beach and see how we can do here. Throwing it kind of probably off the wall by a, probably about a foot, foot and a half. Probably could have gone third gear there. But like I said, this uh, larger wheel is making this R5 feel that much more nice. So if you guys are into drifting or even rally racing, you know, with the paddles being right there, you know, it's it'd be very comfortable. We're going to be doing some racing and stuff like that with these... Uh, with this 12 inch reel on this R5 and keeping the R5 on the rig for a little bit of time. If you guys want to keep seeing more R5 content, make sure you guys follow me on all social media. I'll be found in the description box below. Once again, a big thank you to Moza for sending this out and being a, a continued partner of the channel. Got one more run here. a bit more of an aggressive entry. Oh, wall tap. I felt it. So overall, not too shabby of a run. We'll go take a look at those in the replay to, for end this episode off. I believe that... Oh, no. Uh, we don't go back to replay. This was our first run. So make sure you guys follow me on all social media. I'll just follow the description box below. This entry... That wasn't too bad of an entry. Uh, 
about a foot, foot and a half off, just touching into that zone, so that was not the greatest zone on those last two. That transition was... That wasn't too bad, if I'd say so myself. It wasn't the greatest or the cleanest, but it also wasn't too bad. So let's take a look at the second run, which I felt was a lot more aggressive. So like I said, make sure you guys follow me on all social media. I'll let you find the description box below. Yeah, it was a oh, much, much more aggressive flick. Almost all the way out to the wall. Almost all the way out there. And then here we did do a little, little bumper tap. A little grazer. No big deal. And then we punted that. So as always, uh, thank you guys for coming back and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on the new ES 12-inch wheel. As always, I thank you for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.